What's up? It's Ben from Watt Prep, and in this video, I'm going to teach you the top five movements that you should learn as a CrossFit beginner. So if you're someone who's maybe thinking about trying out CrossFit or functional fitness for the first time, this is the perfect video for you. It's going to teach you a few really important movements that you should probably know and will learn as you start CrossFit. Now, I think anyone from anywhere can get up off the couch and go into a CrossFit gym. If it's a good gym, you will get great coaching. But if you're a little worried about showing up and a little uneasy, like I was when I first started 11 years ago, then this video is going to help show you five, spoiler alert, there's actually a sixth movement, but five main movements that I want you to practice and at least be familiar with before you go to the gym. So this video is going to be a great starting point. And if you are looking for more free training from Wad Prep, I have a lot of free training that's going to help you learn the movements that we talk about in this video and a heck of a lot more. If you want free training, stick around to the end of this video where I will show you where you can get some free goodies from Wad Prep as a special reward for watching this whole video. So stick around and let's get into movement number one. Movement number one is the squat. The squat is probably the most fundamental of all fitness movements. And that's because you and I probably do it every single day. When you go to the bathroom, you're squatting. When you get in and out of a chair, you're squatting. When you get in and out of your car, potentially, you're squatting. So if we learn how to squat properly and we can squat heavy weights, then that actually will translate to the rest of our lives. And that's why we call this whole thing functional fitness. So let me just give you a couple basics about the squat. When you're doing a squat, your feet should start at your shoulders or maybe slightly outside your shoulders. And then your toes should be pointing either directly straight or maybe slightly out. It really doesn't matter. There's a lot of people who will say you have to squat this one particular way. And what I'm telling you is that's fundamentally not true, but here's the general rule. So feet under the shoulders or maybe slightly outside, your toes slightly angled out. And then from here with a nice tight core, and all that means is you're ready to get punched in the core, right? So if I was about to come punch you right in the gut, I'm gonna flex and make sure my core is nice and tight. From here, all I'm gonna do is send my hips back slightly. So I send my hips back. Okay, so all I'm doing is, it's like, let's say there's a car door behind me. I got my arms full of groceries. I'm just trying to shut the car door with my bum, okay? So here's what it looks like. Feet outside the shoulders, toes slightly angled out. I start by sending my butt back just a little bit. And then from here, I'm bending my knees, all while trying to keep my chest nice and proud looking forward. So I bend my knees, squat, 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 squat. And then ideally, the goal is to end up with your hip crease, which is right here, below the top of your knee. That's what we would call a full depth squat. And hey, for some people, you might be able to go even lower than that. And then this is an air squat. Let me do a couple facing the camera, explain my knees, what's going on with that. So as I go down, I like to think about driving my knees out. So I'm driving my knees out this way rather than letting them cave in. Oftentimes, some people will start to squat and we'll see this, this caving in. So we're just gonna try to fight against that by, by spreading our knees out wide as we go down, okay? That is a quick down and dirty squat for you. That's what we would call in CrossFit an air squat. There are lots of different versions of the squat, but the air squat is where we can build off of. So if you are able to learn how to do a good air squat, then we can add more complicated squats like the back squat and the front squat, the thruster eventually, wall balls. You're gonna be able to potentially do an overhead squat. But if you can learn how to do an air squat properly, then you will be in great shape to move on to more complicated movements and more complicated versions of the squat. Movement number two that every beginner for CrossFit should know is the press. So the press is simply taking something from our shoulders and putting it overhead. Again, this is something that we do every day, probably, without even know, knowing it or realizing it. When you're reaching to put uh, those groceries away at the top of the refrigerator or the top of the pantry, or you're reaching up to grab something and pull it down, that is a press. You're, you're, you're going overhead with load. So the press that I want you to learn here is just simply what we would call a strict press or a shoulder press. So all that is is you can take a barbell or a PVC pipe or heck, you can take whatever you want, hold it on your shoulders, and then I'm pressing overhead. Now let's break this down. It seems really simple. There's a couple of little nuances here, so I'll turn to the side. Your feet, uh, generally speaking, are gonna be directly under your hips. So if you feel for your hip bone, you want your feet directly under that. It can be a little wider, it doesn't really matter, but we just wanna have a nice stable position where we're not gonna fall over. So feet underneath those hip bones. Again, nice tight core, pretty much everything we do inside of a functional fitness or CrossFit gym, you need a nice tight core. So tight core means I'm ready to embrace it if someone's gonna punch me in the stomach. So tight core, and then from here, nice proud chest. Let's say we have weight on our shoulders. This is traditionally where the press is gonna come from. Um, so weights on the shoulders, and then my elbows, just to make sure the press is going overhead, I wanna make sure my elbows are either directly under the bar or slightly in front of, of the bar or the load that I'm pressing overhead. And then from here, again, tight core, 
feet locked in. All I do is kind of get my head out of the way. So I'm trying to show you my double chin. I know it's very attractive. So double chin, press directly overhead. And then ideally what we want when you're in your overhead position, as you can see, is that my elbow is fully locked out and the bar is centered over my body. So it's not out here, because if this had any weight to it and it was out here, guess what, it's falling down. And it's also not out here, because this is overextension, this could do all kinds of things in my lower back. So again, with a nice tight core, I'm pressing directly overhead, and I wanna finish with this bar, or whatever I'm lifting, is directly centered over my body and my feet. That is the press. From this strict press, we can start adding more complicated movements, like the push press, like the push jerk, like the split jerk, there's all kinds of, like the thruster. The thruster is a, is a front squat combined with a push press. So all of these different things can be built off of this simple movement, which is the strict press. And if you are comfortable with it, start adding some weight. You can add a barbell, you can add a kettlebell. You can also take it from two hands and just make it one-handed to really focus on developing strength and control with one arm. So here's what it would look like. Nice tight core, feet in the same position. And I'm just pressing directly overhead. Again, trying to make sure that I keep the weight centered over my body, come from the shoulder to overhead. All right, so that's a great way to practice a single arm press. If you can unlock and learn and feel comfortable pressing stuff overhead, then you will be ready to move on to more complicated pressing movements. It's time to talk about movement number three. This is another movement that we do every single day we live our lives, and that's the deadlift. The deadlift is simply picking something up off the ground. That's it, you're just standing up with some sort of weight. So imagine you drop a pencil, or you need to pick up your dog, which I try to do every day, pick them up and hug them. When I do that, I'm lifting something up and, and standing with it. So here's what it looks like in practice. I'll use this PVC pipe again. A deadlift is simply here, and I stand up. That's it, all I'm looking for is you're standing completely up. Inside in the confines of a, of a gym, it's, there's gonna be a few different nuances, but a deadlift, again, is just, you know, normally the bar, especially if it has some weights on it, is gonna start mid shin, and then from here, all I'm doing is standing up. And then if I wanna do multiple reps, I go back down and stand, down and stand. So again, picking anything up off the ground, you're doing some version of a deadlift. If you can develop your deadlift to get really strong, then it can lead to many more complicated and fun movements like cleans, snatches. The deadlift is a part and a piece of a lot of different movements inside the gym. So let's talk about the fundamentals really quick, just a couple quick tips. When we're setting up for the deadlift, I always like to start talking about my feet. So your feet, generally speaking, should be pointed forward and they should be underneath your hips. So again, the squat was outside the hips or, or under the shoulders. The deadlift is pretty much always just gonna be underneath the hips. You could do a sumo deadlift, but we're not gonna talk about that. It's not quite as common. So the traditional deadlift, your feet are underneath the hips. And then from here, when I bend down to pick up the bar, I'm actually gonna try to keep my shins relatively vertical. I'm not trying to deadlift like this. I keep my shins pretty, pretty straight up and down. And then my back, rather than being rounded, I make sure that my core is tight and ready to be punched, but I also make sure that my spine is in what's called a neutral position. So I want my spine to be straight. Here's a good example of this, hopefully this works, is I should be able to balance a PVC pipe you know, right on my back. So you can see my back is pretty darn flat. So from here, with my back nice and flat, I just simply drive through my feet and stand up. If you just think about pressing your feet into the ground, trying to push the earth down with your feet, that's gonna be a great way to help you lift lots of weight and stand up with a deadlift. Let me show you just a couple more reps. Again, I'm going from the mid shin, drive, 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 and stand. And then when I stand, I should be standing basically completely straight up. Traditionally, the, the weight is gonna be just in front of my body. I'm not leaning way back. I'm not finishing here. I'm squeezing my butt cheeks, locking out those hips all the way. That is the deadlift. There's a lot of other nuances, but again, for the sake of this video, that is simply the deadlift. Obviously, just like with the press, I can take a single weight and I can do deadlifts like this, or I can do single arm deadlifts. Okay, there's so many different versions and variations, but if you're comfortable with a PVC pipe or a broomstick, just doing a traditional deadlift, then that's gonna help you move on to more complex and complicated movements inside of the gym. So movement number four that you need to learn when you're starting to do CrossFit is the pull-up. Now, before you freak out, CrossFit pull-ups come in a wide variety of different convulsions and craziness and variations. You have chest of bar, butterfly, there's all kinds of pull-ups that, that we do here, but for the sake of what should you learn first, I want you to learn a simple 
strict pull-up. So a strict pull-up, all I'm doing is going from arms completely locked out to chin above the bar. If you can do that, then you are in a great spot where you can start learning more complicated pull-up variations. So the pull-up is a great demonstration of upper body strength. It's funny because there's actually lots of different like life insurance policies and stuff like that that they somehow determine the rate that they give you based on how many pull-ups you can do. I know, it's crazy. But the reason for that is because in order to do a pull-up, you have to have a good combination of strength to weight ratio. So if I was, if I was like really, really overweight, there's nothing wrong with that and CrossFit can help you if, if you are overweight. But if I was really, really overweight and still decently strong, I still might not be able to do a pull-up. But if I have good strength, and I have a relatively lean body mass, then pull-ups should be pretty easy. And then you look at the opposite side of that coin, there's some people who are really lean, they're, they're really thin, they don't hold very much fat, but they have very little upper body strength and they cannot do pull-ups as well. So if you're someone who's, who's working on pull-ups, obviously I have a ton of videos here on YouTube and on Facebook and everywhere and Instagram about how to do pull-ups. And we even have a free training guide that can help you if you just go to wadprep.com slash pull-ups. But just really quick, the fundamentals of a pull-up are my hands are basically shoulder width, maybe slightly wider. And I have, again, a nice tight core. That's pretty much a given in all of these movements where someone could come and punch me in the core. Hands slightly outside the shoulders, tight core. A lot of times I'll tell people to keep their feet slightly in front of their body rather than cocking their feet back like this. I want your feet kind of in front of your body. And then all we need to do from here is just pull ourselves up. And if you can do that easily and effectively, then you're in great shape. But maybe you can't. How do we work on it? Well, all we do, you take a band, wrap it around the bar that you're pulling from, step into it, and with the same exact mechanics, now we have assisted banded pull-ups. This is a great movement for people who are trying to get the stimulus and the feel of pull-ups, but don't necessarily have the strength to get there. So I hope that this helps. Obviously from here we can move on to lots more complicated movements and gymnastic pulling variations, but if you're comfortable and understand what a true strict pull-up is, then you are in great shape to be a beginner in CrossFit. So movement number five is actually gonna be movement number five and six. I couldn't decide which one I wanted to share with you, so I'll go over both of them. So one of the most fundamental movements in all of CrossFit and in life in general is the burpee. A burpee is simply getting on the ground and then getting back up, right? That's a very fundamental foundational thing that we should be able to do. If we can't lay on the ground and then get back up from it, then we're only a couple steps away from being uh, in an assisted living home. So make sure that you can get on the ground and get back up. Here's what a burpee looks like. All I'm doing is I'm getting myself to the floor however you want to do it. Normally people will kind of kick into this plank position and then just let their chest hit the floor. And then from here, I'm gonna do some sort of modified push up to get myself back up. And then I always do the jump and clap. So let me show you one more time here. I'll kind of angle my body. I'm getting on the floor. And then from here, I'm getting back up. Really simple, that's a burpee. We have actually a really good beginner's guide to burpee on YouTube, so you can go search for that. And we actually have a full how to do all the different versions of burpee course called Burpee Blueprints, one of Watt Prep's best courses in my opinion. But if you know the burpee, then when you go to a CrossFit gym or a functional fitness gym, you're gonna be able to do all kinds of different stuff. So there's burpees over the bar, burpees over the box, uh, reverse burpees, there's all kinds of different stuff. But if you can get on the floor and get back up, then you are in great shape to know how to do functional fitness. The next move that I wanna talk about that I just couldn't leave out of this video is obviously, if you saw it, I accidentally tripped over it, is just simply jumping rope. If you have the coordination to jump and spin the rope around your body, this is called a single under, and then this is called a double under. Whether you can do single unders or double unders, it's a great way to build cardiovascular endurance and most importantly, coordination. Oftentimes I find people can be really strong, they can do all the movements that we just talked about, but as soon as they add a jump rope to their hands, all of their skills and strength go out the window, they need coordination. So that's why I couldn't leave jumping rope out of the equation. In CrossFit specifically, oftentimes you'll find double unders as the primary form of jumping rope, but obviously there's lots more different variations that you can do. But if you have a jump rope, before you go to a CrossFit gym, maybe pick up a jump rope and practice jumping rope. See if you can do single unders. See if you can do double unders, or see if you can do maybe a, a combination of both, where you do a couple singles and then try a double under. The bottom line is double unders are a great tool to help you learn how to breathe or learn how to increase your cardiovascular endurance, and then they're also a great tool to increase your coordination. So I hope that you like this video. I went over five, actually six different movements that I would love for you to learn, and I think all CrossFit beginners should learn. If you're someone who's looking to develop your skills and learn more about this whole CrossFit thing, 
and learn all these more complex skills that we haven't even touched on, then make sure you click the link in the description or in the top comment below where I will give you so much free training that will help you get better at this whole sport of CrossFit. And then next, if you would like to get coaching from the Wad Prep team, where me and the rest of my coaches will actually teach you how to do these things via video, we run seminars. Basically, we've created a fully online CrossFit gym. If you're interested in something like that, then look for our link for Wad Prep Masters below. And if you're more of a learn it yourself kind of person, we also have something called Wad Prep Academy. Wad Prep Academy is where we have full courses and programming to help you learn all the different skills of functional fitness. So the choice is yours. You can click below, get all of that. My last question for you is, what is one movement that you need to get better at in this video? We went over six different movements. What's one of them that you are going to practice within the next week? What's one that you want to get better at? Leave a comment below and let me know, and then I will see you in the next video. Oh, but wait, hold on, one more thing. This is more, this is probably the most beginner video that we've ever made. If you like this beginner style content and you think we should make more beginner content, I would love to make a full guide to squats, a full guide to presses, a full guide to deadlifts, et cetera, et cetera. If you want me to make those videos, please let me know in the comments below. If I don't get very many comments, we might not do it because we tend to focus on the skills, but if you want more beginner content like this, let me know and we'll make it for you. All right, see you next week. Peace. Oh, yeah.